final quarter final match here life coach versus tice and uh yes you are seeing double it is the same classes it is the same decks the g2 uh, bros have all got together got their little practice group and came into the tournament with the exact same classes exact same decks and i think overall uh, they are probably the most refined list in terms of like the tech choices and balance from what we've seen. Possibly the only blunders is, is um, the Varian and the Warrior deck. I mean, that has not worked out a single time. Is that right? <laughs> That's not true. Uh, one time we did play Varian and... No, they can see it right after. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to remember if they actually... Uh, um... If they actually got an impact from it. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. What if they're in a scenario where both of them have to play Varian? Mm. You know, they're they're playing Warrior versus Warrior. Eventually Varian might be one of the ways you can value onto the board. Uh the reason why I was thinking is there's one game where um where the brand Bronzebeard stuck so long that we were thinking, yeah. what if he gets the Varian Ren for the six card draw? Uh, but he didn't end up playing it, and then uh, he, he he was so far ahead he didn't actually need it because it turns out four or five turns of brand on the board is pretty insane, anyways. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, life coach and Tice. Uh, I I think it's just going to come down to whether or not they make like the fewest mistakes. That's what really mirrors are all about. Like who can really take those play perfectly from start to finish, uh, and it's going to come down to like. With, with perfect information, like, they have knowledge of what each other's decks are, it's going to come down to, like, how, how they really feel like all these small little things are. Yesterday, Life Coach messed up a couple times, uh, very noticeably. First, of course, is the Dragon Synergies. He just kind of assumed he had dragons in his hand and just played Blackwing Corruptor and then gave up his dragon to do so. A lot of awkward plays that uh, surfaced because of it. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see what these guys do. I want to see if Life Coach can recover from yesterday. And I do want to mention that the, the class that these guys are running are are now unusual. When when we compare uh, the classes to the remaining semifinalists, there are no other Warriors. There are none others that have qualified through to the semifinals. Um, and the only Priest is uh, the one belonging to Saviz. That's right. And, of course, everyone is playing Druid. But that goes without saying in this tournament, I guess. Yeah, the last uh, flag bearer for the anti-Druid campaign has been thwarted. Trump has dropped out of the race for the championship. That's right. You guys are stuck with... Uh, you guys are stuck with Cruz. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Going into game number one, it looks like a Priest Mirror, which is an interesting lead off here. I was anticipating Druid to start things off, but I guess what they, they want to do is to um, have the Priest feel out the, the lineup. And with Priest, the, the most important thing is just about how the early board snowballs. Um, also, but here's a huge factor is that Life Coach has the Northshire Greetings. Cleric. Yeah. Because a lot of times you're trying to heal and, and keep maintain the board, but the Cleric is going to give you extra cards. And there's there's no there's no kill on that Northshire in sight right now. That Northshire looks like it's going to go uh, very well unchecked. <laughs> I mean, it's it's taunt after taunt in front. So. I mean, I feel like Life Coach's hand is, is mm. I don't know, worlds ahead here. Yeah, I mean, he's going to take his time once again to think if he should use his coin or how he's playing his next couple of turns. I think this turn, you Cleric. Next turn, you can make a case for Bran, but I still think you want to play the Wormrest Agent. And then... Yeah, you definitely and want to worm rest second, but it's it's the third turn where it's uh up to debate, I think. Yeah, that's where it gets complicated. That's right. Do you do you want to play Brand Bronze Beer? Because then I guess it completely adapts to what your opponent's doing. Because if your mm -hmm. opponent passes, then you can definitely play Brand Bronze Beard. But if, if he's playing stronger minions, you probably want to play the Twilight Garden to protect your minions. Alright, well on Tyza's end. Almost certainly going to be a worm rest agent. I actually, he, you think it's pass, but one of the things that you have to consider is that if your opponent's oh, taking the time to use the hero power, they're not climbing onto the board, and without yeah. like light bomb, your comeback mechanisms onto the board are much weaker than before. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any fault to playing the worm rest agent here. Um, I mean, you, you just have to do it. 
Um, North Shire is a big threat. Uh, you have no choice but to play around it. You're going to have to be behind some cards, and you're probably going to lose. But um, oh, wow. wow, he doesn't play it. He holds on to it. I, I mean, this is completely understandable. He's saying if I if he doesn't have a, t a turn two play, then I'm giving him a turn two play to climb really far ahead into the mm -hmm. card count, and I'm not confident in my hand right now because look at Tyson's hands. It's, it's like really late game heavy and nothing to do. So, I mean, Life yeah. Coach has like the perfect hand, and Tyson's hand is just straight out bad. So. We'll have to see if, if Dice can can pull himself up from this one, but it's looking it's looking like a very steep climb. I must you know, I'm wondering if Savitsa's uh, deck is a good matchup against the Dragon Priest. Let's assume that these Dragon decks make it to the finals, uh, mm -hmm. and Savitsa versus Life Coach, for example. Well, do you think he has the edge? Because that Circle of Healing and Anachronite is actually decently reliable if the game can go on long enough to clear mm -hmm. the board. And all those minions are around that range, right? The the, the three to the five, six range. All right. Well, it looks like it's Brandon time. It, it's yeah. It's definitely uh, a really powerful card to put out. Uh, Worm Rest Agent becomes a three four, which happens to challenge the Farseer. Twilight Guardian becomes a Druid the Claw, putting it out of sight of Shadow Word Pain range. Azure Drake draws two cards. Another consider. Wormrest Agent. Tough stuff from Tice. I mean, he's I already looking like he's a big pain playing these cards. I don't think you can just play the... Uh, if you're a life coach, I don't think you can just play the Wormrest Agent. Because if your opponent has um, a Shadow Word Pain, then you get crushed. Right? You, you have to attack with Bran and smite the 3-3. Three, three. There's no choice. So you're saying if you play the... Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, I get what you're saying. Because I was thinking there's also a halfway uh, play with using the Holy Smite, but if you just draw the card now, I think you can get the value off of it. If your opponent had Shadow and Pain, wouldn't he have used it last turn on Brand Bronzebeard? Mm -hmm. So that's also something you can assume. Um, that he would have to draw it off the top of his deck, which is pretty unlikely, I think. Yeah. Well... That's exactly what Life Coach just drew. And he would know exactly how unlikely it is. I don't think we've seen two Shadow Word Pains in one game, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if there are two Shadow Word Pains. No, I don't, I don't think I don't think that any deck is running two. You'd rather have minions in this deck instead of too many spells. And and also, your your synergies got weaker as a class. You don't even have Shrinkmeister, and Shrinkmeister was a legitimate way to combine uh, Shadow Word Pain and give you some other opportunities with Cabal Shadow Priest uh, or grabbing Tempo onto the board. I mean, it, it, Tice probably is just going to Holy Smite the Bran to deny the card draw here. I, must I think he might do double Wormrest Agent and use Holy Smite to finish off his opponent's Wormrest Agent. It's also a possibility, too. Um, the halfway play that Life Coach ended up doing was something that we were, you know, kind of discussing. What does he heal or does he play the Worm Rest Agent? But I think Life Coach identifies that right now his hand is all about whether or not he can uh, grab the most, you like, most board control early on because Tice is conceding a lot of it. All right, well, the Worm Rest hit the board. Another Northshire. I think here you can go full Northshire, right? You can go double Northshire because you know there's no circle heal in this deck. You're not... like when, when you're playing ladder in this situation, you're like, yeah, I better not do this because that one time I saw this highlight where my opponent made me draw my entire deck and I hated it. Um, yeah. but, but he knows this is not an option here. It can't but happen. That's with Pyromancers and Circle of Healings. and Right, right. It's a at different best, deck. your opponent has Holy Nova. Mm-hmm. My only concern is that you really want to be doing the Shadow Word Pain heal play, and you just don't have the mana to do it. But man, would that be strong, I think. You, you don't have to get too crazy. You can just still draw one card instead of two. Yeah. Still not the end of the world. I, I like what you're suggesting. Just the uh, one Shadow Word Pain, kill the Worm Rest Agent, and heal. Probably heal Bran. Mm -hmm. The minion because that you heal is he brings. Yeah. the minion that you heal is the one that you want to survive a Holy Nova. So you're healing your most valuable minion here. 
Okay, so he values the three, four, most stats. That's reasonable. Perhaps he feels like comfortable if your opponent uses Holy Nova. He's, he just wants to keep the most stats on the board. Mm-hmm. Although, personally, I'm very fond of Bran. I just think he's a runaway card. Like, he's a snowball card. He just helps you win that much more. You draw an extra card, you get that extra stat boost. You must consider... Yeah, and he can play um, basically a Druid of the Claw for four mana if he wants. Mm-hmm. That would be so nice if Bran survives. And I think there's some chance that he will survive. Yeah, but I mean, what he do- what, what Bran also does is just convert Azure Drake to Ancient of Lore power. It's like you draw two cards, five mana, four, four. It's like, what? How does that even, how's that even fair at that point? Because like the, the priest is going to be trying to fight back with cards, um, but you can only blackly corrupt or so many things before you just run out of resources. Oh, there we see Holy Nova. Let's see uh, here. I guess this is an opportunity for you to, once again, either go for like card draws, like you were mentioning, or you can set up like a bigger minion to challenge the. Um, you can play the Twilight Garden to challenge the Harrison. The thing about the Azure Drake is, once again, you're losing your dragon synergies, and you still don't have a true guarantee of picking it up. It's it's one of those likely scenarios, but you you might also be sabotaging yourself for future mm. turns. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think Twilight Guardian is also okay. But either way, whether you go for some of these plays, you're going to be a little bit mana efficient. There's also like the possibility he could just like Holy Nova or something. Yeah, I, just I don't Holy know. Nova trade in Bran. Yeah. Okay, that's the play, I guess. You could also just not trade in Bran. Just hit face. Yeah, because if he heals the uh, the Harrison, you can you can still kill it with the Pyromancer uh, Power War Shield, and if he heals it, you draw a card. Oh, I really like trading the brand because uh, we didn't mention Cabal Shadow Priest on turn six, so mm-hmm. that could have oh, been. Uh, it. Yeah, but it's like you don't want to give them more value than they need on that. But mm-hmm. perhaps because he cleared Brand, now he can Cabal Shadow Priest a one three Norshar Cleric and take it off the board. Yeah, that is very helpful. These decks, you, I think you observed over time that these decks don't run in Tomb, correct, Crip? And if Let they don't, I think they do. I think they have like Earth? one in Tomb. Oh, they do have one in Tomb. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. If, if they didn't, I, I think a Tomb is very important to Dragon Priest, just because you, how do you deal with the really big threats if they have, you know, your Sarah, for example, or Ragnaros. Mm-hmm. Um. In this this case, because you're able to outcard your opponent, you can get very close to him too. Mm, I kind of want to see the pyro play, but maybe the oh, you can, you don't want to you don't want to power word shield without playing the pyro. Mm, man, this is such a tricky play. Mm. None of these options are like perfect right now. You have like five second best options, basically. Yeah. I don't mind playing the Twilight Guardian. Um, or you can just heal. Oh, interesting. Does that change the play? Blackwing Corruptor? No, you can kill the 4 5, and uh, you can leave your 3 6 um, in a position where it doesn't die to the board. I think I like that the best. Yeah. It's a very good draw. Okay, and that's a scenario where drawing first was very important. No. Yeah, absolutely. a lot of people are always like, ah, he drew second, didn't really matter. No, this this actually did matter. Mm-hmm. Um, Fall Shadow Priest number two doesn't actually have value here. In fact, it gets challenged by the board too easily. So maybe you power with shield. Mm-hmm. Try to get your own corruptor. Draw. Holy Nova. Holy Nova and Holy Smite, so board clear. You don't get to draw, though. Oh, you do. You can attack first into the 3-2. Oh, you're right, you're right. You can willingly take a little bit of damage there, and I think that's pretty clever. I like that. Oh, I think that's totally legitimate. It even puts it at a 1-4 state for next turn if you want to draw another card. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit vulnerable to your opponent's Cabal Shadow Priest, but you know I think this is the best way to cycle your card. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, so back over to life, Coach. He's gonna look for a way to take this away. Oh, oh and he found a way to take it oh. away. <laughs> Let me change your mind. Thank you for your generous contribution to my side of the board. <laughs> I think you'd play the other North right here. There's no reason not to. It's not like there's some kind of card that kills all of these. Not as far as we're thinking of. Um... And then you could ball another one. Shad Ooh, Shadow or Pain. Interesting. Do you I think you'd want to keep that though. Shadow or Pain is amazing tempo on a Twilight Guardian. That's true. But you also Hmm. Do you maybe want to take the North Shire and North heal your Shire. own North Shire? That will give both so... players one card. Mm, but yeah, player draw a card and that's if scenario. you do that you have a one five North Shire, which is out of basically out of range like you're going to initiate a good attack next turn with, by doing that play i think that's the play if you don't shadow word pain but i i think the shadow word pain play is still very legitimate shadow word pain is like i'm comfortable with the cards i have and i don't want you to have any more cards mm -hmm. and if i heal the cleric it's like i give you more tools to answer my board so i think when you say it like that shadow word pain is might be actually the, the better play here the, the thing is that his hand's also looking um, okay because he has Ysera. So yeah. maybe he feels really comfortable dragging this into the into like the value game of one card versus one quality card versus like a, a handful of decent cards. This is absolutely the game where Ysera can make all the difference. There's also Nefarian and a few other cards that can really throw a huge uh, curveball into the mix. Um, I'm thinking if like Nefarian pulls Light Bomb or like similar power level of cards in terms of what it can do to earn back the board or even just close out the game. Um, and we do know Nefarians run in both of these Priest decks. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that is their second Dragon of Choice compared to like, they don't have Chill Maw, for example. I think Kibler was the only person to run Chill Maw. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, though. I don't remember exactly. I know Nefarian is a warrior deck, along with Anixia. Anixia was the decks, for sure. Mm -hmm. if, if Nefarian was in... I just remembered that Nefarian was in Life Coach's deck when he was playing against a Shaman, and he needed to get something, and he got Totemic Might. Oh, yeah, the, that's right. The, the, the very... It's just a cherry on top of a beautiful cake, honestly. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I think I think it might be time to try to go for I the Yasera. It's like the best opportunity you'll ever get. Mm -hmm. Even right, though the board's pretty see. heavy, though. Uh, okay. It's not too That's bad. That's not too bad. I agree. Now, is there a way to deal with the Yasera immediately? 3, 10, 11 You'd have damage. You to to another spell. So you Azure Drake. Azure Drake gives up your Dragon Synergy mm. for your Wormrest Agent. Mm -hmm. Also, if you Azure Drake, you also lose your Blackwing Corruptor, so you have to Power Word Shield first. Oh, I man. Was thinking, uh -huh. I was thinking Pyro Power Word Shield. Yeah. It's kind of but bad, I, I'm, though. I'm really afraid of... Um, I'm really afraid of Azure Drake. Like, I think if you also pick up Holy Nova, you, you can't play if you play Azure Drake, so I think it's just better. Nope. No spell in sight. No Holy Smite. Although I think maybe one Holy Smite is what they've run in each deck. This is like, please don't have Yasera Awakens. Yeah. Yasera Awakens would just absolutely crush, and that would be a very anticlimactic end to this game. Well, without Yasera Awakens... Oh, that is a good one, though. That is a ton of draws. That is, that's a lot, but um, he's under some pretty significant pressure. And he can't necessarily like clear too many minions, he can clear two. Yeah, but you can, mm. you can North Shire Holy Nova, and if you don't draw anything good, you can play the Twilight Garden to kind of just right. stop your opponent from killing you. It's, it's definitely good enough. I mean, it's, it's a great card to have um, as opposed to something else, but after he bumps into these things... Uh, Tice is going to be at 15 health, or, or maybe 17, but, and there's, 
there's uh, 13 on the board, so if he doesn't heal himself, he's within danger of dying to Holy Nova himself. I guess he's just gonna play the, the Twilight Guardian. Mm -hmm. Sarah draws another card, which is really impactful. That's that's pretty good. Um, oh, oh there is Holy Nova, but I don't believe that's lethal. No, because he can't get past the uh, the Twilight Guardian. Is there like? Oh, you, it, it is lethal! It is lethal! It is lethal! The the Pyromancer. I wonder. No, just the Holy the Holy Nova does three. That's good enough. Three is good oh, enough. Oh, spell power! You're right. Spell power, and then. Oh no no! It's one short. It's one short. Wait, what if you played the Pyromancer? It's no, it's one short with the Pyromancer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was trying to recount. Oh man, oh. such a card draw. Oh, and there's the farce here. That's a little bit of bounce. Oh, and Bran, oh, the heal for six. Potentially heal for twelve. It's another one somehow. <laughs> Okay, I like it. You know, I actually really like this attack here, because um, now Tice Awakens doesn't work. Can't play Awakens. I mean, he has a Farseer, but he, in Life Coach's mind, he can't do it. He can heal. He can heal for twelve. He can um, dream his own Farseer if he really wants. But it's probably better to dream like uh, Harrison, I think. So Bran, Farseer, puts you to eight. You can clear. I, I think you have to... You probably, you you, probably you play dream. the spells first. No, you, you play the spells first. So you play um, the Pyromancer, then the 4-2 goes into the 4-6. Uh, Power Word Shield. Uh, then you dream the Harrison, and then you start playing the heals. I probably want to dream the Cabal Shadow Priest as well because the Harrison can die at least to the Cabal or the Ysera. Um It's a little bit too much health, I think. It depends. I think either way, there's still like some really cool room for plays. Um, okay, so he ends up trading that. Almost the same difference here. Just needs to kind of get moving on the spells. No, he's his sequencing is perfect. To... He's he's gonna have a ton of loot. Yeah, it's a nice play. Oh, did he miss? No, he didn't. He got the Twilight Well. Yeah, perfect play here from Dice. Wow. Another dream. There is the Farseer, but you don't care about Farseer. You want damage, and he doesn't have it. And there's nothing you can do to gain more. Hmm. Man, this Ysera has commanded the board so heavily. Yeah, it's it's just the the fact that uh, she's been able to fight back in value. Remember, once upon a time, Dice had like three cards or four cards, and Life Coach is on five or six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, this game started very badly for Dice. Yep. And the comeback is because you lack the ability to close out the game. This dream is monumental, by the way. You can dream the 3-3 three, three after attacking, trade your Pyromancer in, and heal for another 6. Uh, I mean, the heal is somewhat inconsequential, because I don't think you're anticipating your opponent bursting you. Like, a Priest is still a pretty honest class in this format. Um, no one's running, like, a, a, a you big... You can't lose priest. otherwise, though. I mean, yeah, you could... Okay, you could not heal, but then you could get, like, double mind blasted from a Nefarian. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess you're right, but it's it's not... I wield that's power. not gonna happen. Come on. All right. I mean, look Look at how big his board is. He can just heal himself. Yeah, he's, he's fine. Yeah, I don't think he necessarily needs to go too big. He's even healing uh, the Pyromancer instead. Life Coach is on his last turn here because there's too much damage. He knows with the Blackwing Corruptor, uh, he's got a lot of yep. burst there. He's going to wrap it up. And a uh, really fun game. Uh, wow. I think that one comp Crazy comeback. Really do well done by Tice. Yeah, yeah, that really was very well done. 
Um, the the opener was so depressing for Tice. There was just nothing he could really do. Um, and he was just piloted so carefully from behind just to edge out that scenario where he can possibly win and those complicated late-game control 10-mana combo plays executed perfectly to, uh, to secure the game there. Great stuff. Uh, and I think we will see a little bit more from that. I mean, th this is the style of deck that both of these players have brought. So, yeah. um... Yeah, there's more to come. They love the control decks, man. That's kind of uh, their MO as G2 players. Uh, we do want to remind you guys that uh, we've been featuring tweets all over the stream. Uh, so make sure to hashtag Curse Trials, and we'll have an opportunity to show what you guys are saying on the broadcast. Let us know who you're cheering for, your favorite moments, uh, whether or not you like Crip's shirt. Uh, all those different, all those comments are fair do. play. So. All yeah. right. Well, it's going to be uh, Druid versus Warrior here. Easily favored on the Druid side from what we've seen, but um, not an absolute matchup. Mr. Wren has made an appearance once again. <laughs> However, I don't, want know, him. I don't know if you... Okay, so here's like an actual uh, question. Do you think Varian Wren will ever see an appropriate play? Like, wow, that was awesome. Like, yeah. that was exactly what he needed. Uh, by the time this tournament ends. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna see one in in this match. Not maybe not this game, but this match. I think we're gonna see one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I I don't think I I don't think we will. To be honest, I mean, maybe in this this is the match that's most likely to. If it's not this match, then it won't happen, Crip. No, that's not true. I think the Druid will win this match, hmm. and then I think it'll inevitably be like Warrior versus Warrior. <laughs> no, I'm talking the match, not 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 this oh, game. Oh yeah, 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 right, right, right. The match. match. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's probably gonna have to beat this match. Yeah, right. You want to put out Violet Teacher? I mean, uh, you you get. I think you use... don't have this and see where you're at. Like, what does the warrior have? I wonder. The thing about Darnassus is that it gets answered so easily by so many things with Warrior, and that early game doesn't do anything, but. You know, the opposite side is Darnassus is not going to do anything in the turns if you don't play it now. Right. Therefore, you're much more inclined to get value out of it immediately. And also, Violet Teacher might just bait and execute, and then, you know, you just lost an bait. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's like what you said. You have a lot of opportunities and flexibilities. Emperor Thorson's really good, too. You just want to bash this, for sure, if you're Tice. You don't want to give ramp to your opponent. Uh, if you play a minion, you give an opportunity to get punished by a coin play, where they can coin through the claw, and then have like a minion that's much stronger than you should have be dealing with at that turn. You can still bash it later, but... Yeah, this is a no-brainer bash, but these players do like to take their time, so... Yeah. It's not quite as instant. I think we're pretty safe on an Emperor here. I think I'd do it. Yeah, the hand quality is, is okay, honestly. Uh, you have Vile Teacher Wrath mm. following turn. Um, and then, of course, Emperor needs to be answered. <sighs> hmm. You must have just lose the execute. So if you think there's an activator and an execute. Well, nice Shield Slam. Members. Shield Slam is also. Oh, that's right. Shield Slam. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Shield Slam wow. with Brand Bronzebeard or. Anything else is just like, oh, okay, well, crap, I lost that. <laughs> lost that. All right, board. well, you're playing one of those minions. I guess we could do like a, we could like test the water so we just play the vile feature then. Mm -hmm. The thing no. about the Thorson though no is that it has the most, it has the most blowout potential of like, I win now because you didn't do anything. Uh, we've seen what happens when Force of Nature can get down to three mana. You can win a turn six combo. <laughs> um, not to mention Thorson's also five damage. Ooh. And look, no answer to the Thorson, at least and directly. No dragon, even. We still have the, uh, what is it, Oasis Guardian. Uh, Twilight Six. Guardian. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Oasis Guardian, I get it, I get it. Sorry, Crip, I'm a little bit slow. My master of the English language. Twilight Snapjaw is, is the other, other term, I guess. Well, isn't it, it's more like shield 
Uh, it's kind of like Maiden of the Lake status, but... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Without a teacher giving you the opportunity to wrath for one, <coughs> that's really good. Class. Now you get two cards that are discounted immediately. Mm -hmm. um, another if, he does, if he doesn't do this, he does lose Emperor, because uh, Bran and Cruel Task does bring the, uh, the dragon to six attack. Well, I'm assuming he's going to. Yeah, I'm assuming he's going to trade into it. I think it'd be a little foolish not to. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe he wants to remove the armor if that's the case. But I'm anticipating a trade <clears throat> into it. Yeah, if he's if he's got a shield slam, he, he would have played it on Tharson last turn. Oh, okay. Well, Tharson won't get answered then from that. Not the end of the world, though. I mean, he already got some value off the Thorson. Five damage. Plus uh, six mana gain from the reduction of the mana cost. Mm -hmm. I personally like the brand bronze beard and the cruel taskmaster play. I don't really see too much of an alternative. The longer you leave up the Thoris, and the higher chance you are just getting out tempoed on the board. Well, it's a bit late for that, but yeah, it, it goes to several different degrees. Yep. And, you know, the biggest thing is that... Oh, man. Nice draw as well. Uh, the biggest thing, too, is that, um, you know, you were originally running lower on cards as Druid, but when you pick up that Azure Drake, now you can feel free to, like, throw out a Swipe and, uh, I guess, an Aspirin here. Um, mm -hmm. And then just, like, if your opponent clears the board, you have just Drake to kind of refill and, and put the pressure back on. I'm pretty happy with Swipe. I think Swipe doesn't see too much value in this matchup, and... Uh... It's a decent turn for it. You can swipe your power to clear, play the Darnassus, who'll be on seven mana next turn. Um, I guess seven mana doesn't do too much for you, but hmm, I whatever, I guess. <laughs> uh, what is the alternative? The alternative would be to drill the claw and kill Bran with your with your board. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a possibility. Load up a lot of like small health minions, like three to two to three health each but the problem with that is you're you, i mean you could be wait, like getting walking into like a blackwing corruptor and you just want to keep the bio teacher as healthy as possible that card's giving you a lot of board presence the longer you keep it alive and it's very clear that ties can't remove it so if i'm life coach i'm just riding the teacher all the way home like just have her keep pushing more tokens and just keep imposing and what it's so scary because Next turn, if he picks up Savage War, he can use it and immediately use Force of Nature Savage War to end the game. Wow. Is that game ending? It probably is. The 7 yeah, million definitely. Savage War. In fact, what's really funny is that he has so many tokens that if he plays Force of Nature, he's only going to get two Treants. Oh, yeah, that's kind of bad, actually. That sucks. That, I don't think, is lethal then. Well, you trade one token and then play Force Nature, Savage Run, and then it'd be lethal, I think. Uh, well, he, he did heal with the Farseer, so maybe that's not the case. Um, either way, he doesn't have it. Uh, once again, would you swipe here? I'd consider it. Um, Drew the Claw is also pretty... is okay. I like Drew the Claw. I, I like Drew the Claw for, like, game-ending damage next turn. It's 10 damage from hand. If you can, if you can really s squeeze it in somewhere. Right now, you, if you swipe, you can do three, five, seven, eight damage. No, that's not enough. Swipe your because you would. I don't think that's enough because you assume he armors up. You're still going to be like two points off lethal-ish. Plus, he can gain from other sources. So I think you just play the board control. Hero power down three two. Still take it a little bit slow here. Yeah, this is good. Well, the 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 fact that Druid still can't play anything except Jessica Truhar here is pretty sad. Oh, he's got a little bit of a play now, but it's not great. It's probably better than Justicar, though. The issue with Justicar is you, you won't be able to really do anything in the next few turns either. Alright, Weaponsmith picks up the Farce here. Pretty okay. Meanwhile... Very Rin being the good father he is, being a cheerleader for the rest of his uh, cards there. Dratcher Drake keeps putting on the pressure. 
Yeah, it's good enough. Loving Roots does three here, pops out a 1-1. One, one. Gets half the value of the other choose option. <laughs> awesome. Choose one, kill a minion, and summon a 1-1, one, one, or summon two 1-1s. One, <laughs> Alright. 8, 10, 20 damage next turn. Uh, oops, no, he can't summon all of those treants, so... No dragon again. Yeah. It's time to, uh, go for the Jessica Chuhar for the tank up, but I think this is enough damage. Um, oh, wait, is it? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to sacrifice one, play Force of Nature. You sacrifice... Oh, no, 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 no! Both of them, right? It's because the other token is, um... Wait, he's gonna summon... He's gonna have a full board! I'm ready to learn. Yeah, he had to sacrifice he the, to other sacrifice one the other one. one. <laughs> it's actually a, a small misplay. He, uh. he missed lethal there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Well, you know what? It's okay, because he's still in a really good position. He's laughing about it. <laughs> he's like, don't worry, no one saw that. Uh. And here comes Reno Jackson. Oh, 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 oh man. If he did, I, I think uh, he should honor concede, even though he. <laughs> in the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, yeah, you have the real Jackson, it's okay, just... It's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, good stuff. Life Coach does get the point, and I think more importantly than the point, he gets the win with the Warrior. I think this is really the, uh, the third wheel of this lineup. Um, and I think that's been proven uh, as Warrior came in as a fairly popular class. I think it was played by almost half the field, and here we are with our last two remaining Warrior players up against each other. Uh, yeah, so, uh, looks like, um, you know, that warrior's just gonna have to kill off the, uh, the priest, probably, if you're That's tight. hard to do. Like, yeah. I think the warrior's terrible against priest and terrible against druid. Um, maybe. I mean, I, I can definitely see a case where it's like, warrior can't remove clerics or like, and it just like gets outvalued too much, but I also see a world where the warrior gets finally the optimal line of removal like right last game a lot oh, of the reason talking? why it happened the way it did was Tice had nothing for a turn three emperor and that just got him too far behind all right now i i think i'm just totally confused there there was the check marks there on the warrior i'm i'm, I'm dumb no there's there's no warrior that won anything the, the the warrior winning anything is really the deciding factor in this i think there's no warriors that have won yeah. Right. Tice won the first game as priest, and then life coach won as druid. Yeah. And now we're at one one. Yeah, priest and druid. Yeah, they're both putting off warrior. Like I don't want to play that deck right now. <laughs> I mean, we could all just go ahead and just make this a best of one and just play warrior versus warrior. That's also a possibility. I, I'd or we down. could postpone that as much as possible. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure we will, uh, if we don't get started now, we might not finish until Standard comes out for real, Crip, and then this <laughs> format would be invalid. We'll, we'll have to see. Alright, well this is a, a decent, oh, that's a really good hand from the Priest now. That is precisely the card he was looking for. Yeah, not bad. Still, a little bit, uh, a little bit awkward because you can't kill the Aspirant, and it just so happens that the two Living Roots... Uh, is enough to kill uh, the Twilight. Enough. I think it is one Living Roots and Hero Power and the 2 3 attack, right? Ah, oh, you're right, you're right. Uh, you can also just use that as well. Um, yeah, it's much better. The funny thing <clears throat> is, on the following turn when you play the Keeper, if you don't draw anything else to play, there might be a reasonable case where you silence the death rattle of your Dalaran Aspirant. Oh yeah, that's actually a play that we've seen uh, several times happen when Darnass Assassin first came out. In fact, Tice uh, did that a lot. Uh, so it's pretty cool if he ends up being the guy doing it. I've seen him do it in multiple tournaments uh, at BlizzCon, at Sea Story Cup, at um, and in and DreamHack as well. He was doing all those plays. Yeah, it really depends on what he draws here. If he doesn't draw anything to uh, to follow the next few plays. Mm, wild growth. Again, you're basically getting wild growth of the battle cry of the keeper. 
The keep how how valuable is keeper to this deck? Sylvanas is not really in it. Um, you silence Twilight Guardians or like Chillmaws if they ever get to the board, but I don't think they run it. I think so. you should totally do this. I think you want to ramp as much as possible. You can do Azure Drake next turn, and on six you can Wild Growth into Ragnaros on seven. Hmm. What's the alternative? Is there any alternative? I don't. I don't think so. I think Wild I'm Growth leaves the um, leaves the Esperant just out to dry. So mm -hmm. good opportunity there. Really like this line. And now Twilight Guardian does come down, but you can play the Twilight or sorry the Azure Drake in response. See what comes out off the draw. I'm curious if if Life Coach is going to try to um, to bully Tice here. I think there might be a case for that as well. I think if you attack the 2-1, it's less likely that the 2-4 will attack the 3-6. That's more likely that you'll steal it on 6 mana. Mm. That's also a good point, too. Um, you have to consider that for sure. I think Life Coach is wondering if there's value in trading into the 2-1. Um, one of the things that you always want to be careful of is Savage Roar to answer you right back. If you use a Savage Roar, you wouldn't lose the board. Um, you would lose it to Savage Roar in a Wrath. But that's... I don't think there would be a case for Savage Roar unless it'd be a very desperate one. So, you're right, right, but it's, it's a minimal risk. Yeah, he has nothing else. Okay, so he makes a trade. Perfectly reasonable. Um, teacher can combo with the Living Roots, but it doesn't seem particularly effective this turn, so I think we still play the Azure Drake. Not to mention that, um, you know, you, you still want to get deeper in your deck so you can get things like Force of Nature, Savage Roar, Slife, etc. Mm -hmm. Alright, how do, how do we handle this one? Annoying. It's just so annoying. Four health. I think we do the same thing. I think we do. We just leave the two four on the board, just so you could steal it next turn. I wonder. Because there's not really anything else you want to steal, and you have to play the cabal next turn. So, if you, yeah, you lose a minion, but if you if you do a value trade with the three six, you're going to lose your three six, and you're going to get an injured keeper. So it's much better to just suicide your minion here. And I wonder if if Tice is going to pick up on this and intentionally damage his keeper as a result. Oh, it's a pretty big deal. It would make it's like the difference between making swipe super effective or not. Mm -hmm. Here I'm I'm with the uh, the Violet Teacher Wild Growth play. Just play whatever and uh, play for a Ragnaros on the next turn. Do you want to set up for lore though? I mean that's also a possibility. Maybe the Ragnaros is your best bet because you just need to snipe something onto the board. Like you're falling. Behind on the overstated minions with the like the tempo is gonna gonna be so much against you. So. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, uh. class. All right. Well, um, I think Life Coach has been the one making the uh, the excellent place here. Oh, is he gonna make the attack? Wow, he oh. sees it. Dice sees it's, through uh, Life Coach's excellent oh my plays. This. That's oh, another that's not worth playing draw. Nah, it's time. It's time to steal. Cause now, now, life coach, if he's on top of his game, would realize that the only way that you'd wild grow there is to play an eight drop. What's the only eight drop? It's Ragnaros. I think life coach is going to see through that play. It's it's like these guys are playing on like a way way high level right now. But um, yeah, I, I think Shadowward Pain is actually a waste here. He has to he has to basically play into swipe. But what about and I think the... that's the correct play. What about the Pyromancer and the Shadowward Pain and you heal up mm. the Blackwing Corruptor? Do you like that? Because mm. you do still have a reasonable amount of health spread out and you still have three minions. No, I think I'd take like, it. Teacher is so good, this Shadowward Pain. Oh. I think I'd take it. Okay. Mm. I think you'd I take think it to one. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a really valid point. What other things are you going to take with the? Uh, what other things are you going to be able to take with the uh, with the Cabal Shadow Priest? Man, okay, heals the um, heals the Drake, so it makes sense. So it doesn't like die. 
very easily. If you healed the Black Wing Corruptor, it would be worse to swipe. Ooh. I was thinking about Wrath. That well, Wrath play might change some things up. You can play as your Drake and Wrath and Living Roots to basically clear the board. Love this play. It's so strong. Oh, oh man. Into swipe. So close. Wait, uh. That's correct. That's correct. I was just thinking, like, if uh, he had enough mana to, like, swipe something. Like, innervate swipe is, like, no, Wrath costs two, so it's not the case here. Wow, really effective job clearing the board. That's a good draw. One damage away from clearing the board, and because he doesn't. That would also mean a swipe on the other end clears the board for the druid. That would be the first time druid ever ends his turn with nothing on the priest side. Well, I don't think he'll swipe unless he picks up a five. If he if he gets another like very if he gets another oversized minion, he won't be able to swipe. I think he has to play more than just swipe. It's a good point. Can't float that much. Wow! Yes. Talk about excellent Anna. draws. So now he can ancient of lore and yep. swipe. Yeah. Or even uh, Emperor, but I, I mean, it comp completely depends on what you want to do here. I, I can't really turn down the two cards, Lore, Innervate, Swipe. That's a huge swing. He's got a Wrath, but a Wrath I don't think is good enough here. Oh, man. All right, so now as the Priest players, everything was going so right, and now all of a sudden it's gone so wrong. Yeah. It's back in the position where it might have Force of Nature Savage or next turn and you could just die. Wow, that would be disgusting. You got a brand and double draw though. I don't really see another another play that's comparable. Play your own lore. Doesn't draw the exact same quality minions. Um Why why not Ragnaros here now? Yeah, I like uh, Wrath for four on the Drake. I like the Ancient of Lore killing Bran. Uh, and then it puts your opponent on 16, and you have overwhelming board control. Feels good, and uh, 16 health is definitely like one of those situations where Priest has to have immediate reaction, very sharp one. Uh, can't really do anything about it. Yeah, he might have to play Ysera or something. I don't even know how that'll work. Yeah, but the problem with that is if you just play Ysera, you die to just, like, a Savage War. Um, you die just to a 50-50 rack. <laughs> also a possibility. That I think that might be it for Life Coach this game. Druid just too imposing. He's gonna try. Ysera might have an opportunity to get, like, Dream if it absorbs some stuff, but... Well, it is Dream. Uh, uh, Nine. Oh, oh there Savage Roar! Savage Roar for the guaranteed. And that'll wrap it up, so game number three goes to Tice's way. He's one game away from uh, upsetting his teammate. And life one warrior coach. win away, though. This one is, warrior this is win very win. relevant. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the fact that he, he's only facing other Dragon Warriors might play into his benefit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do feel that the Dragon Priest is uh, is a pretty successful deck the way they've built it. I think the reason the other priests failed is because they didn't have enough uh, HP bounce. Um, I mean, all the priests left in the tournaments are uh, this one, the priest that they, these guys are running with the Farseers, with the Bran, and um, Savizas, which has the bounce with the Flash Heal. Uh, but I feel the, the Warrior struggles from not having those good cards anymore, but also doesn't have the bounce. So... It's, it's a slow deck with even fewer comeback mechanics. But we are going to see the Warrior Mirror. If we're ever going to see any decent variant ever hitting play in this tournament, or ever, really. I mean, who is playing that card these days? But uh, it's going to have to happen here. Against Priest? Oh, it's Warrior. It's Warrior both ways. Yeah, it's a right. Warrior Mirror. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm in, man. I, I think, I, you know, I was kind of like hating on the Varian Ren a little bit just because he's haven't had any impact. But if there's one scenario, it would be this game. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, it does have a chance to, to be impactful in the, the Priest game. I mean, Priest doesn't have Light Bomb, so we might be exaggerating a little bit. However, 
it feels like Warrior vs. Warrior is still... It's still reminiscent of the old days, except the only thing is that these guys don't really have many access to weapons to keep the board clear. So cards like Fierce Monkey is surprisingly really good against Warrior. Yeah, they don't have that spike. So it's like all these like really annoying things that just keep surviving. Man, we have two sad Alistraza champions with no Alistraza. That's right, Lonely Hearts. Um, at, at this point... You're just going to be hero powering a lot. No, I think you play your uh, your also as a champion because you have the the cruel task to back it up. On the other side of the board, it's it's a little bit more difficult. Here we might see might see a coin monkey, but man, that would get so punished. Mm hmm. Yeah. I okay. Think, so the cool I think taskmaster. I like Alistraza's champion better. If if you just play your very own Alistraza's oh, champion, no. you can follow up and clear his if th something bad happens in a trade with uh, the Weaponsmith. And if yours just gets harder removed, then you can play the Monkey. I think if you play Alistraza's champion, you have full flexibility. Okay. I think the Fierce Monkey is like forcing your opponent to play into a specific way to make himself mana inefficient, so... That's probably yeah. the way he's thinking about it. Okay. It is It is not going to work out, though. The, the Cruel Task is going to dominate the monkey. Uh, the Cruel Task will not die to the Weaponsmith because the coin was used. Most likely, he'll play Alistraza's champion now. And then now we have recovery with the uh, with the Weaponsmith on, on Tysa's side. Oh, that's that's dangerous. Wow. He went with a brand already. Yeah, and there's that Weaponsmith waiting on the other side, which you know is a possibility. Mm hmm. Oh man, Tyson's really looking really good right now. Tyson's yeah. got the board, he's got basically card advantage. He has much higher quality cards. I mean, what's Life Coach going to have to do? He's going to have to like bash this Arathi by the Smith or something? No, he can just play his own, I no, suppose. He'll play his own, I think, which also the weapon. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I, these decks run Harrison. Have we seen that in the Warriors? I believe we have. I think I think a lot of their decks have Harrison. I think maybe all the decks have Harrison now that I think about it. So oh, it's all three that. decks have Fire Series and Harrison Jones. Makes sense. Just kill right. shamans. Well all the right. the bash does get punished the least. And that turns out to be a much better play than the Arathi Weaponsmith, which is what I think I would have played. Right, we know that the Blackwing Corruptor would have sniped the Wappy Weapon Smith for three damage, giving him a lot of proactive tempo. You still, still gotta go for it, though. Probably want to play it. Yeah. Even though you don't get the immediate value, uh, with these dragon decks, the mid range, the mid game of uh, is, is like so important because it lays foundation of how you curve into your late game. No dragon yet. There is a a couple ways to remove this. Is there? Yeah. It's the shield the block, block or the Alistraza's champion plus shield slam. That's the only way yeah. to remove it, right? Mm -hmm. I think you have to do the shield block. The other one is just kind of poor. Yeah, I think keeping the the Alistraza's champion plus the weapons with next turn is pretty decent. Five mana, five damage. Mm -hmm. Six mana removal, so it's fine. Pretty dead turn here for Tice. Shield yeah, Tice has run very badly since his uh, very big early game advantage. Oh, oh no. my god. That's what? Very good wants to pull you, Sarah, not to just have it joined the hand. Yeah, he doesn't want to be preceded by uh, you, Sarah, oh. and Anixia. In before Varian Rin pulls, execute, execute <laughs> Fiery War Axe. <laughs> I think when it's more weapons, it's actually worse. If it's like uh, Fiery War X, Fiery War X, Weaponsmith. That's like, I think that's the bottom. Oh no, Weaponsmith's a minion. Hmm. It's got to be something worse than that. Well, just, you know, two Fiery War Axes and, uh, I don't know. I think, I think it's just like the point is that you spend your entire turn playing Varian, so you, nothing costs zero mana in this deck, I think. Unless you're able to get Emperor Thoris and value off of it. With a weapon oh, out, no. Thorson does get weaker too, so Life Coach is certainly considering all of his options. 
I wonder if he wants to still go for that aggressive route. It's a two damage weapon, and he can put three health or higher minions out if he plays like Alex Raza's charge and the weaponsmith, or if he just goes for Fierce Monkey to absorb some damage. I think I like the Emperor. Yeah, I like this play as well. This is gonna work out a little bit better. Did he get that attack in? Looks like he was trying to go for the attack, but actually didn't make it. I think that's for the best, though. Without Harrison on the other side, it's probably best to not attack. Because the two damage comes in very useful to uh, coming up with uh, minion lethals. Yeah, it, I mean, the minion lethals are going to be sneaky. Um, I don't even know if we've seen... Have we seen many finishers in this deck? I don't think we even saw Alex Straza, for example, right? Like, Alex Straza is usually a way you set up for lethal with some of these yeah. late-game control wars, but I don't think we've even... Sorry. Excellent draw there. Wow. Yeah, the Blackwing Corruptor is super effective. You could have still used Bash, but it's not as efficient as uh, this Blackwing Corruptor to develop a 5-4. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after it's all been said and done, Crip, we're going to turn 8 with both players almost at full health. It's just kind of been back and forth sparring. But looking at the hands, I mean, as much as we joke about Varian Rin, it's it's going to be refilling the hand with other cards to play. Mm -hmm. And you have to also consider that, like, even though Varian Rin won't pull out the Ysera for the ultimate value, he still just has Ysera, and there's no direct easy way to remove it, like Execute, uh, or even like Brawl sometimes when, when you have to play minion and try to hope to kill it that way. Well, you can play Bran and fill your side of the bo board twice with Anixia. Bash, Shield Slam, preserve the Bran. Dude, Brand I, I so want to see it! I want to see the Bran variant dream, but I, I don't think I'm going to live to see the day. Mm. I think the idea with the Bran here is uh, it's a scary card, and he's just trying to bait removal before he drops Anixia or Ysera. Yeah. And this 8 damage happens to line up very nicely for Anixia, but there's still the 1-1s one remaining. Without cards like Whirlwind and Revenge in the deck, it's going to be tricky to remove all those 1-1s. One mm -hmm. I think I'll, I'm uh, I'm more on board for the Anixia than I am for the Ysera. How about you? Yeah, I think because um, there's already 8 damage represented, and you spread out all those 1-1s, one -ones, it's the 1-1s one -ones help you control the board, so that way you have a better Ysera. Uh... Yeah, I'm definitely in your camp, man. I think uh, Anixia has a better impact. I think I'd probably follow up with Varian, though. I don't think I would do... Um, cause, okay, so what we've noticed is that these decks have no brawl, number one, right? Like We've, we've seen more of this warrior than really any other deck because right. three people in the tournament brought this exact deck and it was the worst I of their lineup. The so we've definitely seen four, the most. Four, four brought it to the tournament. Was it four? Yeah, Eloise and Kibler also brought it. Oh, well, that would be five, but three players brought exactly this deck. Oh, yeah, already. That, we, that we know there's no brawl. Well, the Acera turns oh. out to be way better when you're going to get an Awakens. That's that's huge. Yeah, I should have said that. If you can guarantee the Awakens, then yeah, let's just do that. He does have um, enough damage to kill Yacera, but man, that's a big investment. Oh, with Anixia to follow, I think I would do this. Yeah, you give up your board to replace it later on. I think that's perfectly fine. And this is part of the reason why um, I was still a little bit skeptical, honestly, about playing Ysera. Just because the Anixia is so much better controlling the board. However, what? it's one of those things where, like, when Tice played the Ysera when he was in the Priest Mirror... Um, if the Ysera still doesn't die, say it survives as like a 4-2, you can get two cards off of it. That really pulls you far ahead if you're able to get uh, a lot of high-value cards. Still, Ysera Awakens, one of the best. Uh, pretty much the best that you'll ever see uh, against a mid-range deck like this. I think it's going to be... Oh, he oh, can actually man. Anixia and Shield Slam. Oh, yeah. man. I you love do that, that, don't you? And no Brawl, right? Let's, let's go. All right. It's not quite Deathwing, but it's uh, a lot better than it. 
the daughter. And I guess oh, it was so sorry. good it crashed the spectator mode. <laughs> yeah, we'll flip uh, POVs here and just uh, try to get back live coaches cam. Uh, mm -hmm. That is quite a board. Eight? That's 17, 17 worth of stats, right? Mm -hmm. oh, well, uh, easy play from life coach. He just responds with <laughs> his own, uh, what is it, queen of the broodmother or something like that? It's so something like that. She's. I thought she says you dare defy the daughter of Deathwing or something like that. Yeah, that's her. That's her like em emote when she gets played. Yeah. All right. Well, here I'm. I'm in for Varian, I believe. I think you you trade four whelps and see what Varian gives you. What happens if you? Pull play variant is just kill a minion if it tries to pull a minion that's a, on a full board. I don't know what happens. Mm. He might go for Yasir Awakens, but oh, well, actually, this I looks like he is going for Yasir Awakens. Yep, this gonna be Awakens, and then play the Fierce Monkey. Uh, this I is a very aggressive approach. Yeah. It's fine because now he's trying to like play with his smaller cards and make them get value before he plays Varian Rin as a refill. Mm -hmm. Well, let's but, see if Lycoach had an answer to uh, Anixia. We hadn't seen one earlier. No, it looks like he has Twilight Guardian and the... without a dragon. Oh. Okay, this is kind of sad because, this to is be over. honest, Tyus yeah. doesn't even need Varian Rin. No! It's like one of those things where he would have been useful. What? No. My name's Don't concede, Life Coach. I'm helping, right, guys? Don't concede. Guys, I'm helping, right? <laughs> that was that was considered the most overpowered card of the GVG set. The irony. Oh, you mean TGT? Oh, TGT, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were like, oh my god, this is so good. Oh, it was fan voted as probably the strongest card. Even even a lot of the pros voted it the best card. Like I thought it was gonna be one of the best cards too. Yeah, it was that and like I think what was another legendary that was there was also a couple other the, ones. The that second were... fan voted best card in the set was a missed color. Was it? Oh <laughs> uh, alright. I did not agree with that one though. Yeah. Here we go. Uh Farseer, Behold not really that needed. Yeah. You get Varian a little bit more value out of this play. Top. Just because you don't really need anything else. Second armor smith. Wait, what? Oh my god. Second Farseer. And what? a dragon. What's your name? Three minions. Three minions. We did it! This played is effective. The ultimate victory cigar. You have successfully landed a Varian Rin. Congratulations, Tice. Uh, you are going to be moving on to next round, barring a magical rip off the top. I have no clue what can come out. Uh, not even a Nefarian would be able to. No. Still looking for Dragon Synergies, and that's going to be wrapping it up here. Yeah, yeah. it looks like Tice will be the G2 member advancing to the semifinals. Great play, great play. And, uh, you know, Tice really didn't make many errors at all. Uh, like, he, he may have taken different lines than... Uh, some people watching may may say, but overall he's very strong. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, highlighted by that turn, that that ten mana, you know, very intricate control priest play. It's very easy to mess that kind of stuff up. You know, players like Amaz and stuff can identify it very quickly because they've played it many times. But Tice, mm -hmm. uh, showcasing why he is also a, a control player to be feared. Absolutely. Let's have a look at our bracket so we can see what to expect for the rest of the day. Uh, the semifinals uh, are coming right up. It will be uh, Super JJ versus Saviz, and following that, Oskaka versus Tice. We'll get to see after two matches who will advance to the final and eventually take home the uh, first place. I think it's like 13000 bucks. Yeah, almost. That. Almost. All right. Who's Who's... Who's your go-to guy here? Like we got, we got four guys left in the running. Who do you think's gonna take? I it? got my boy Super JJ, man. I, I, like that mid-range shaman gets me hyped. It's just one of those things where I have, I keep expecting it to like. Okay, this is where the variance catches up, and we see the mid-range shaman for its true colors, right? It's overperforming, mm -hmm. and then it just keeps winning. Uh, and now he's up against another person that I think he could take advantage of, depending on how it goes. We'll see. Uh, that's going to be coming out for you right after this break. We want to give a shout out to uh, Geek Fuel, the Curse Network, Arthpone, 
as well as the innkeeper. Uh, it's, it's plastered all over the, uh, the, the stream stuff. Make sure you guys just check it out when we send those links in uh, in the chat as well. Uh, innkeeper.com helps you manage all of your collection manager and stuff. Uh, so when we come back, we're going to have uh, our semifinals begin. So don't go anywhere. More Cursed Trials continues right after this short break. <laughs> 